two, one. Okay. Hello, I'm Jane Voorhees and welcome to my studio. I'm here in Asheville in the tiny studio that I have in the back of my home. And I did a previous video that um, was about doing a watercolor underpainting and I wanted to take it to the next step and show you that process. I have uh, the images that I forgot on the previous one that I'll show you. Uh, it shows the steps in a finished painting. And if you look at these photographs, the colors don't match, but that's not important. Uh, that's a printer issue. But this was my initial application of paint on the paper very random i did think about the flower the flowers and added those orange colors so then i did the drawing on top of that uh, application of color then i started working with negative uh, painting technique where i'm painting around the shapes of the petals instead of the petals themselves and then this is basically the the end piece but here's what it really looks like and um, but you can see that it's really a you know it adds a lot that technique adds a lot of color and randomness to it so yeah uh, the other day I it, I showed you the technique with a, it was using a plastic bag and I create these um, underpaintings and I wanted to show you what I do next. So in this case I took this piece and this is my reference photo for it. Let me orient it together and the reason I thought I can pull this off we'll see is there's just a lot of color that I can use in here. I love this combination of these these pots that were that was in a friend's uh, driveway. And what I'm going to show today is I'm going to start doing some of the negative painting and pulling it together. But the first thing I did was to do the drawing. And at this point, the I've used a 3B pencil, and my the pencil mark is pretty dark on my paper and I have a kneaded eraser that was really dirty and you just pull it apart like this and it's also a great worry stone kind of thing and you get a clean area get the inside which is clean and then what I'm going to do is pick up the graphite so I'm just left with a, a faint image on the paper Hey, on the paper. Now another way I can do it, and you can see how dirty it got with all that graphite, I'm going to pull it apart again and get it clean. Why are you cleaning that, Jane? Because I don't want more graphite in places I don't want. Oh, excuse me, this is Chad Alice Hagen behind the camera helping me. <laughs> and uh, so if I get a clean area, then I can keep the paper clean as well. So now here's another cool way to to lift the the graphite and get a fainter pencil line on the paper, which is what I'm trying to do. I can roll it just like we did in grade school, and then roll it over the paper, and you can see that really lifts it uniformly. And then I am working with it a faint outline. But the reason I like to use this technique, particularly where um, I have um, man-made objects, the pots and the, the uh, watering can, and I have organic shapes with the foliage, is that the, what has happened with the watercolor is it has created these delightful shapes um, on the paper. And I will use those shapes. I don't have to try and create. When we try and create organic shapes, often we duplicate ourselves over and over again and they get real rounded and not they just don't have the quality that the um the accidental marks do so i can take my pencil and think about drawing this foliage and just kind of follow these shapes and and then i can 
I will further define them by what I paint around them. But I'm going to, that takes time, but which we don't have today, but I wanted to just show you how I use that. Here's a nice area right here. And I'm going to go in here and just follow that light area and you see you just get this lovely ragged edge it's got some variation in color I can bring it back and here's the pot you know I'm just showing you real quick but so I'm gonna continue on that way so it's kind of it's maybe a little hard to see but I just want to give you a basic idea so now I'm gonna put a little color on here just so you can see where I'm going with it. So the first thing I have to do is um, spray my paints. Um, and what I'm gonna mix up is a, I wanna start painting this dark area in here because once I get some of these darks around here, then I will be defining the watering can. So I'm gonna mix for that dark, I'm going to mix an ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna. And it's going to give me a nice dark and neutral. So I brought those two colors out and then I mix them together. It does help if you have a little scrap of paper to try it on, which I forgot to put out here. But um, You can see that that's a nice dark. So if I take that and then I come in here and using my drawing, what I'm doing is just the first part of this painting. And I, I'm working around my drawing and I'm painting that um, flower pot that is behind the watering can. So it's gonna make the watering can stand out and I'm painting around the handle right now which is very delicate this may be hard to see and then I see where I have lots of water it's almost standing up on edge I can just take that paint and spread it out And the thing is, is it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect at this point. This is just the first, this is, you know, your watercolor, you're, you're building up the, um, the value. And, and really this, um, kind of painting is really about value because I am making this darker than what's in front of it. And hopefully it will look like something. And you see in some places that are, are wet, I'm kind of dropping the color in. Now over here, I've got a little shape. And if I don't want it to bleed there, I can leave a little bit of a space so they don't run together. And down here, trying to find my drawing. This, um, the pot that is in the back is a lighter color, so I just have water to, to the um, mixture that I have, and I can just get that color on there. The other thing about watercolor is you have to wait for things to dry, which we can't do in this demo. So we're going to have some challenges here, but I'm just trying to show a difference of value up against the watering can so that the watering can will be visible. And it's starting to come together. The watering can on the image has a shadow. You know, you put that 
that in there. And, you know, I'm not too worried about color even at this point, but um, I do not like that edge there up at the top because it doesn't... So it's still a little damp, so I can kind of... Uh, straighten it out, which is what, you know, when you're working with these kinds of man-made objects, you do want those edges to look. But you see, it's already starting to, to come together. And I'm just doing light washes around the object. The picture even has some purples in this point, and I could be, I haven't mixed up a purple, but that is something I could do. And the shadow is a soft edge. So if I want a soft edge, I need to drag some water up next to it. And see, there's a nice soft edge rather than a hard edge. It's gonna be a hard edge where, it's, where it comes up against dry and a, soft edge where it's wet. And then to unify something like the watering can. So the watering can, um, I'm gonna just add some color in some places just to bring out the watering can. Though this is not, okay. So now you can see the basically the shape of the watering can. And the watering can has got a shadow on the right-hand side. So I would then darken that shape. And I don't want a hard edge here. See where I've painted in that shape. So I can just soften that shape with water. And then up at the top, there is the inside. One thing that I do when I'm painting is I squint a lot so that I can see what it's looking like. And of course, this process, would take some time. I'm not going to go very far with it. I just wanted to show the initial steps of moving into the painting and building it up. So what I've done here is basically I've defined the, the watering can by painting around it. I've unified it a little by adding the, the shadow. I can build more on top of that. I can just keep uh, I'm paying attention to value. That's that's really important on this. And um, I will keep checking that and ha may have to make more adjustments as I go along. And that's probably about as far as I'm going to go for this demo at this point. But I just wanted to share that with you. Um, this is, you can see my previous demo at VorheesFamilyArt.com. This is part of our weekend Voorhees Family Art Show, and I really appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.